Hey everyone! While we're here, we're back, and today we have another anti-MLM video, and for this video we are doing yet another Top Fails video. It has been a little while since my last Top Fails video, which means it is time to do a Top Fails video. We have a variety of videos to react to, and a picture that I found, well, screenshot that I took that we will be looking at and I will be commenting on. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video and if you do please give it a thumbs up and if you really really like it please subscribe. Make sure to check out my description below for all of my fun links. And with all of that said let's get started. So the first video we will be watching is one of my absolute favorite topics to react to when it comes to top fails videos and that is people in the MLM network marketing world trying to debunk myths. So far we've probably had like three, between three and five people on the channel talk about myths in the MLM world and not a single one of them have been able to debunk anything. They have only just kind of made things up or said that it doesn't exist in their team or they haven't personally seen it and it's like that doesn't mean that you are debunking anything because you haven't seen it or it doesn't happen in your team or they will just state blanket misinformation. So I'm sure one of the three of those will probably happen when it comes to this person, but let's hear her out. Maybe she'll be able to debunk something for us. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional network marketer and I help people build big teams and create cultures that they never want to leave. Are you tired create cultures that they never want to leave, cults that they never want to leave. Interesting. Of the daily grind and looking for a way out, network marketing might just be what you're looking for. Now, before we jump in, I want to go over five common myths today about that kind of surround network marketing. Today, we're going to debunk those myths and unveil the truth about network marketing. Now, myth number one is that network marketing is a pyramid scheme. Who's heard that? Who has heard that? Contrary to popular belief, guys, traditional business is more of a pyramid scheme than anything else, right? You got the CEO at the top. Oh, it's not about the shape of the company. Every company out there is going to be shaped like a pyramid. It's going to be shaped like a triangle. That is not what being in a pyramid scheme is. It's about how the money is made, how the money is distributed. It's, <laughs> it's not about the shape of the company. You got the vice president, the president, the vice president, the employees, the janitors, right? The people at the... Um... Janitors are the employees. They're on the same level. They're not below the employees. Really? All right. I mean, the only people that would be below employees would, I guess, be interns. Uh, but I guess if you view janitors as less than. The bottom have no chance of going to the top. Zero. Zero chance. And network marketing. I, but, yeah. okay. Also, that that does not, what do you mean they don't have a chance of going to the top? Like, I guess they don't have a chance at overtaking the CEO's position, but you know what's crazy about the MLM world? You also don't have that chance. Not a single person, I don't think, in any MLM has overtaken the CEO in the company. They may have left their MLM and started their own network marketing business, their own MLM business. That's different. They have not rank advanced so much to where they are now the CEO. That's not a position you can you can just rank up to. You come in, you create your own business, and you are at the top, and then you fill in with everyone else, and they also have that same opportunity to be at the top of their own business. So contrary to popular belief, network marketing is a legitimate business, and it's based on the sale of products or services. You know what's crazy, though, is that you pretty much started this out by talking about building teams. You did not say, I help you sell products. You stated that you help people build teams. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional network marketer, and I help people build big teams and create cultures that they never want to leave. 
in my business that I'm in now, we are a membership based model. So we don't get paid when you buy the products. We get paid when you come in as a member. So it's all about building a network of customers and distributors and earning commissions from every, and, and you know, from either sales they generate or other members that they bring in. And in our case, it's members that they bring in. So it's not just about recruiting and building a pyramid. That is a that's my myth number one, and that is the first myth I am going to debunk. Myth number two, network marketing is a get-rich-quick scheme. Guys, it's important to understand that... I will say that I think the majority of people are maybe aware now that when it comes to the MLM world, like, like there is... The whole get rich quick thing is kind of, you know, been there, done that sort of thing. They are stating, like, it's a lot of hard work and dedication and time... But at the same time, they really do focus on the bigger picture and how much money you can make and how you're the CEO of your own company and look at the potential and look at this and look at this. So although they may not be saying like, you can get rich quick, it's they kind of are just working around saying that. Success in network marketing is like any other business. It's gonna require hard work, dedication, and persistence. It's gonna require doing the activities daily, consistently, day in, day out to build your business, okay? Now, while it does offer great financial freedom and income potential, it is not a quick fix and you're gonna have to put the work in. Myth number three, network marketing is all about selling to your family and friends. Well, I mean, that's where it's the easiest. I don't know if people necessarily say like that you only sell to your family and friends, but obviously where you're probably gonna make the most money and get actual people to be recruited underneath you is people that you know. That's why they always focus on the warm, your warm market. And that's usually where you see the most sales and the most success is through your family and friends. While initially to get your business off the ground, Network marketing is a great place to reach out to family and friends, show them something incredible that you have, right? But your inner circle is only so big. What you don't realize is that successful network marketers always build businesses by reaching out to a wider audience and expanding their networks. It is not just about selling to your family and friends, okay? Myth number four, network marketing is a scam. Like who's heard this one, right? How is that different than then number one, that it's a pyramid scheme. Schemes and scams are basically the same thing. So yeah, I've heard that. And also like for you to make a whole video and two out of your five topics are that it's a scheme and this, or sorry, that it's not a scheme or a scam. Is this really the kind of business you wanna be getting involved in when you have to constantly defend against being a scheme or a scam? I don't get it. Is, wouldn't that just be exhausting? You're like, nope, can't be that. Oh, I know you've heard it. Let me tell you why it's not. Like, it just seems like a waste of time and energy to me. The misconception often arises because there are a few bad apples in every profession, right? There's a few dishonest companies out there. However, there are hundreds, if not thousands of reputable network marketing companies. And you know, network marketing is endorsed by Robert Kawasaki, Tony Robbins, Richard Branson, Warren Buffett. I don't even know, I could keep going, but every major money mogul on the planet endorses network marketing. I don't think that's necessarily true. And also just because you list these like billionaires and say they endorse it, doesn't make it not a scam. Plenty of people were were talking about how amazing crypto is and how you need to get out there and buy NFTs. And then for the most part, most of those things ended up being a scam and taking advantage of so many people. So just because people who have money endorse it doesn't make it legitimate as an incredible business opportunity. In fact, some of them say if they could do it over again, they would do nothing but network marketing. That's how powerful network marketing is. So it is very much far from a scam. It all comes down like anything else. Do your due diligence, okay? Research a company, research the owners, align with the leadership, okay? Make sure you're aligning with your values and you're joining a trustworthy organization. I absolutely could not agree with her more and actually her even stating to basically 
do your research and look up the owners and look up this kind of stuff. I think that is important and that you should look into these companies, but they just want you to go in blindly and they typically say the phrase, what could you lose? You know, just try it, see what happens, what could you lose? Instead of actually, you know, telling people to look up information, do your research, you know, look into the company's products, the company's CEO, just things about the company, but they don't want people to do that because then they, you know, will find out, I don't know, truth. So my last and final myth is myth number five, and that is that network marketing is a saturated market, right? Because every it absolutely is. It absolutely is. And if you're going to say something, you're going to say there's so many people that you can sell to. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get those people. It is absolutely oversaturated. And, you know, you can only sell to whatever countries that are open to, to you. Like most of the time, it's usually, you know, if it's a U.S. based MLM, the three countries that they usually branch out to will be we have the U.S., Canada, and then like Europe or Australia is usually the next one they go to. You don't have the entire world to, to sell to because those companies are not operating in other countries. And then you don't just have like, oh, my state is oversaturated. Every single state, every city has people who are selling these MLMs in it. And on top of that, on top of just competing with other people who are in either the same MLM as you or similar MLMs, you're competing with other products on the market that are similar and a much reasonable price and a lot more accessible to where you could just maybe go to the store and pick it up or purchase it from Amazon and have it delivered to you versus going through the person's unique link and doing all that and then, you know, paying for shipping and then having it shipped to your house, which they make it seem like only in MLMs could they ship to your house. Isn't that so awesome and great that you don't have to hand deliver the item to the person? It's like, yep, I live in 2023. I know what, you know, having things shipped to my house is. Everybody, my grandma did it, my aunt did it, so-and-so did it, everybody's done it. Guys, with millions of people involved in network marketing, it's easy to think that it's saturated. But the truth is that there are unlimited opportunities out there waiting for those who are willing to put in the effort and stand out from the crowd. So if you're looking to break free from traditional nine to five- Did that answer the question? I don't think that answered the question. Five basic grind, right? Commuting to work, whatever, and achieve financial freedom, don't let the myths hold you back because network marketing truly is one of the most legitimate and exciting opportunities for anyone who's willing to do the work and overcome themselves, which is really the biggest thing we need to overcome. I love that about network marketing. It forces us to grow. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please hit that bell notification so you can get notified when I have more valuable content for you. See you at the top and peace out. Bye MLM lady. Um, ha. Huh. So that was that video. She did not debunk anything. And again, when two out of your five myths are about being a scam that you have to defend? Why is that a company that you want to align with with your values and your morals? Like, why would you want to align with a company that has so many myths attached to it? Why is that something that you want to be a part of? And to state that like, oh, it's not just all about recruiting, even though that's pretty much all I talked about. It's like, we have products too. That's usually always how it is when it comes to them defending the company that they are a part of. It is consistently, you know, join my team, financial freedom, free trips. They use all of these things to get people involved in the business side. And then when somebody states pyramid scheme, scam, whatever, they're like, we have products. We're legitimate. The products are always second. And if the products are second and the business side is first, then yeah, it's going to come off and be a pyramid scheme. Hair tips for those looking for fuller, thicker hair at the scalp, something to help with their dry, broken split ends, and oily, oily roots, 
is to do a daily treatment. So I am on day four here, here, and I am obsessed. As a blonde who bleaches, I used to always, always, always struggle with broken. I know everybody's hair is different, but like, if my hair <laughs> could look like that on day four and not the greasy, greasiness that I have going. <laughs> <laughs> by day two that would be incredible so I I gonna let her you know of course keep going but the reason that I am putting this video in is because she just you know is like oh let me just talk about a product and how amazing this product is and nowhere in the title does this say what the company is of course we probably know what the company is but then let me look at the yeah, in the description, it doesn't say what the company name is or even what the product name is. So this is something that's very annoying, is when you're on, let's say, YouTube Shorts or TikTok, and these things appear, especially if you are looking for, you know, information about certain products, and this happened to me a lot. I was looking for products, you know, just, just in general, just a casual search about hair products and, like, what I would use, and... I saw so many of these types of cryptic, sketchy videos of these Monate Huns talking about how amazing this product is and never once saying the name of the product or saying the name of the company that they work for, they pay to work for. And to me, that's extremely misleading. And, you know, I would look at the comments and people would be like, oh my God, what's the name of this product? And sometimes people would say what it is. It's the rejuvenique oil. And then other times people would say like, I messaged you. When you have to be sneaky about the product that you apparently love and want to scream from the rooftops that you support, Maybe say it in the video. Don't be scared to say the name unless you understand that your company that you pay to work for has, I don't know, a bad reputation. This what ends. Every time I went to the hairdresser, they would just have to cut more off because it looked dead. Um, and now I can grow out my hair and it's super, super healthy and I barely have to even get it trimmed. My hairdresser is always impressed because of these stinking products. So every day, two pumps of leave-in conditioner to my ends to keep them hydrated, less friction, less breakage, less damage. And then for a thicker, fuller scalp, I apply, oops, this scalp serum and this scalp serum. Just this scalp serum. I'm not gonna say what it is. I'm not gonna mention what the brand is. I'm just gonna say it so that you reach out to me. I'm always gonna be a little cryptic and a little bit secret about the product that I am trying to sell than not just stating what the name of the product or the company is. Totally legitimate. It dries on my scalp and on my hair with absolutely no residue. This is not gonna make your scalp more oily. It will help. And then also put your dry shampoo on before you go to bed. Let those oils get soaked up overnight and make sure you're using a safe dry shampoo one that is butane and talc free if you need link to a good one that is safe i have some link to my bio but this will be huge if you struggle with any of those hair problems bye monet lady i just it's you know when you go on tiktok or youtube and you you know you're just scrolling through and you see people talking about a product they will usually state what the product is they will say it's in my amazon link on my channel um but it does seem to me when it has to do with an mlm product they will just say oh i have a link to it in my bio i have a link to it in my bio and it's like why don't you state what it is like any other person that is promoting an item, usually if it's for, like, if they're part of the Amazon affiliate, they will almost always state what the brand name is, what the product, the name of the product is so that people can look up for it. And then they'll say, if you want to, if you want it, I have a link to it so you can go directly to it. It's in my bio. There is a difference between, you know, at least being open and stating what the name of the product is. Sometimes they'll even say how much it is. She didn't even say how much this product is. It's just, 
hey, this is amazing. This is incredible. It's done this for me. My hairdresser can't stop talking about how incredibly different I look now. <laughs> Which I don't believe. It's just, it's when, <laughs> it's not the best way to sell a product by, you know, just not ever stating what the product is. Just, you know, kind of casually sort of talking about its uses so that people are so in love with, I guess, the results, whether they're real or not, that they're just, they don't care what, where the product comes from and they'll pay whatever price it is. So I'd mentioned how I found a screenshot and, well, I took a screenshot and I was on TikTok, I was just scrolling through and my TikTok is, it kind of has a little bit of everything because I'll be like looking for like MLM stuff on the TikTok that I use for just like everyday TikTok usage. So it's got a lot of everything. And a lot of things that I get specifically in the live section is MLMers going live on TikTok. And so I was scrolling through and I saw this um, bomb party. That's the name of the MLM. It's the jewelry MLM. So she's a part of bomb party. And I saw in the background, her thing says, join my team, but team is crossed out and it says cult. So join my cult. And I understand that she's trying to be in on the joke. But the sad part is, is that we don't say cult as like, it's a joke. It's kind of, it kind of comes off as realistic. It's the way they talk. They actually use very similar language to cults. They you know, call each other a family, which is like, I don't know, you paid to work for this company and now you are all a family. And that when people do leave, they ostracize them and they tell everybody to not talk to them and they tell them that they just quit and that they're a failure. And, you know, that happens with cults. Like if somebody leaves, they're told to no longer talk to that person. Like, just don't even talk to them. They don't love us anymore. They don't care about us. So it's very similar. If you were to go to a store and you go to the cashier and right next to the cashier, it says, we're not going to scam you, hee hee, or we totally don't rip you off, you would be like, what is that? Like, why? Well, what do you got going on there? And it's like, oh, just a bunch of people think that we ripped them off at our store here. Ha ha ha. I'd be like, so you have people that say that you ripped them off, that you have ripped them off. So people's actual testimonies, and they could probably back it up with some proof. And instead of, I don't know, fixing the issue or not being a part of it, you're just going to kind of make fun of it. Yep, that's definitely not a company that I personally want, would want to, one, pay to work for, or two, pay to sell their products. Today, I get to share with you a little bit more about my testimony from Hustle to Homestead. That little tagline right there exemplifies part of this journey, and I'm excited to dive in and share a little bit more with you. When I first was introduced to doTERRA, I was working full-time as a speech pathologist, and I actually... I was working more than full-time as a speech pathologist. I had come out of grad school a few years prior. I was eager, eager to dive into the profession, make a difference. And one of the key things with that profession is there is a huge shortage in speech pathologists. And so I was able to work as much as I wanted. And I did. And my whole mindset at that point in my life was work harder, work harder, work harder, work harder. So I was... So far, this sounds like the... The ideal job for somebody that wants to help someone work as much as they want and get paid to help people versus, you know, I get that you can't do that from home. And if your whole thing is that you just want to stay home, there are other ways to do that besides an MLM business. But it's always really sad when somebody has, you know, a job that truly is helping people and they get out because they're either convinced that, you know, hey, don't you want to stay home, whether they do or not, you know, they're told that this is the ideal way to live, or they are kind of, you know, swayed to leave because maybe they have a child and they do want to stay home with them. But, and they're convinced by the upline, the person that recruits them that, oh, well, don't worry, you are staying in the same realm 
of helping people. You're actually going to be helping more people than you could ever help at the current job that you're at, which is another thing that they say. And it's like selling oils, selling jewelry, selling hair products. Those are not changing the world. Those are not changing people's lives. They're not helping people. They're You're just a salesperson. That's it. There's no other fancy title to it. So I was trading my time for money. And when doTERRA was introduced to me, it was this whole concept of residual income and passive income. It blew my mind. I wanted to know more. I wanted to create, see what my life could be like. My All of a sudden, my brain began to envision a life different than what I had thought. And it was really exciting. So I dove. She is hitting all those MLM airy quotes 101 like if I could see my life differently and the residual income and it's like you're not getting residual income because maybe temporarily for a couple months if you don't recruit and people are just doing I guess what the people below are supposed supposed to be doing and you don't have to do anything and you're getting money for that that's great but if people leave and you derank or you don't buy or sell a certain amount of product in the month, which by the way, that takes work. And therefore it's not just residual income. It's not just you doing nothing. You are having to do something. You are having to sell and or buy, even buying the product and talking about it online is working. And I made a commitment to build my business with doTERRA while simultaneously continuing my speech pathologist career. And, um, when our, so two years later, when our first daughter was born, I was able to leave my career as a speech pathologist and dive in fully with my career as a wellness advocate with doTERRA. And throughout this whole thing, there's been massive growth in myself and, and aligning with my value systems and creating this vision. But one of the things along that line was realizing that I wasn't building a life with my values. And so what that brought then was this total commitment and passion for a life of freedom. And so we decided we wanted to be homesteaders. We decided we wanted to homeschool. We decided that we wanted to create more remote style of living where we could work on our terms and our life got to be the first priority and work fit into our life rather than what we traditionally were following was trying to squeeze our life into these little nuggets of time, which maybe you can relate. And so this business has offered a complete turnaround in our life. It has brought my marriage closer. It has brought me as a mom closer with my kids. It has developed me as a person and strengthened my leadership skills and my entrepreneurial spirit. And that is putting everything like on the business, like the business did all of that for you. And it, it didn't, it didn't. And maybe like, because you now work from home instead of out in the world, you're obviously able to focus more on yourself, on your children, on your husband. So that was more on you, not on the business, because you could work from home doing something else. There, the MLM world, as much as they will act like they are the only ones where you can get a work from home job, there are so many work from home jobs. There are so many jobs where you can be at home or even just like leave a few hours a day, not even a day, a week, you know, you can make things work. And it depends on certain circumstances, of course. But it's not only in the MLM world where you can work from home and there you go. Like their biggest thing is the work from home aspect. But, and maybe back, you know, three years, four years ago, they used to claim that and say, isn't that great? But now that we're in 2023 and unfortunately due to the pandemic, you know, that had to happen. But now I guess thanks to the pandemic, so many more work from home jobs have opened up and people are aware. It just seems like this switch that she has made has in her mind been entirely due to her being in an MLM business. And I don't think that that is healthy to fully give all of that to a company.
just provided so much. So I am extremely grateful for all that doTERRA has brought into my life. And I'm excited for you to be a part of this and to see where it's going to bring you in your life. So congratulations on taking whatever step you're on. And I'm excited to hear where your journey takes you. Bye, doTERRA lady. So I'm guessing this was a video that was sent to new recruits to make them feel good, um, to make them, I guess, excited for the potential to be her and how, like, she's able to stay home and she's able to be fully present with her children. And it's like, they always say this stuff when they're in the MLM, that the MLM has made their relationship with their family stronger or their relationship stronger. It's all thanks to the MLM. But then they get out and they're like, I was spending no time with my family. My marriage was actually on the rocks, but yet I'm told to act like everything's perfect. Act like my whole life is perfect thanks to the MLM. And that is entirely the vibe that I got with her. That thanks to the MLM, her life is perfect now. But I really don't think it is. All right, so this will be the last video for this video. <laughs> I don't know how, what other way to word it. But this video is going to be about how to bring up the Plexus business opportunity in an authentic authentic way, which I really am excited to learn all about that. Hey, Diamond Ambassador here, and I want to share with you guys how you can naturally bring up Plexus in a conversation without being salesy. There are so many options. Here is the thing. There's obviously like a, I guess, natural way to go about something, but if your whole agenda is talking to them to try and recruit them or to sell to them, then you're going to be salesy no matter what. Opportunities that are out there that are being missed because you're simply not creating them or you're not capitalizing on the moment. So let me tell you about an experience that I just had. My kiddos have swim lessons. We have a lady that comes to our house. And so we're friends on Facebook now, and she's been following my post, and she liked my reset post this morning. So I knew she's been seeing what we do. Obviously, she sees our life here. She sees this gorgeous pool that we have. She sees where we're living. She sees our life, right? And so... After swim lessons today, I got some samples together and I handed them to her. But before I did, I just simply asked her this one question. I said, okay, so you're going to try to tell me that this whole interaction was not salesy when you were just like, oh, here's some free products that you could totally just try. I'm not trying to sell you on anything, even though the whole point of my job, supposedly, is selling you the product. But yet it's totally a natural thing. She liked my post. This is her fault. <laughs> she shouldn't have liked the post. She shouldn't be, I don't know, coming to my house and giving my children swim lessons. Which, by the way, let's say that she does join Plexus and quits her job. Uh, who's going to teach her children how to swim now? Because she's not going to have enough time to do her other job, do her actual job of, you know, teaching children or adults or whoever how to swim. Um, who's going to do that? You know, I always wonder that. I always wonder, like, when they talk about thanking Starbucks, you know, being able to buy a Starbucks and being able to buy McDonald's and being able to go get their nails done. Let's say you were to recruit all those people. Who would you be able to thank? You know, you wouldn't be able to thank the MLM anymore for your Starbucks and for your nails because those people no longer are working those jobs because now you've recruited them into this amazing opportunity. Hey, have you ever thought about network marketing as another stream of income? And then I just was quiet and listened. If you think that that is a natural way, an authentic way, and it doesn't come off salesy, you're crazy. <laughs> And so she shared with me about how she had tried it before with another company and the products were confusing and the lady said that she would help her and she didn't. And so she has just kind of only been a purchaser from now on and she has never wanted to build a business. And so I said, I totally understand that. I'm so sorry that you had a bad experience. That's a lot of times what I find when people don't pursue this is that they had a negative experience. And I said, I just want to let you know that we're really, really good at what we do. I make over $200,000 from my phone. 
And here's the thing, you guys, you don't have to be. And did you state that your results are not typical? That, that is not the norm? You also, you know, of course, are trying to go about this in an authentic way. And of course, bringing up how much money you make is super authentic making that kind of money for it to make an impact. You could say, and I'm making $500 a month extra from my phone. Like what could that do for you? So I asked her, I said, what would that extra income do for you and your family? And so then I got quiet again and I listened and she told me her dreams about what this would mean for her family, how she would love to have a pool like ours, um, to do even more with the swim lessons and all these other things. And I don't need to get into details about her dreams, but I sat there and I listened to her dreams and I said, well, we can make that happen. We cash flow this pool because of these supplements. I said, here, I'm going to send you some more information about them, but try them. You're going to love them. Here's an electrolyte drink. Here's a blood sugar balancing drink. Here's a clean energy drink. I said, it's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. And I really just want you to think about it. And I complimented her and I said, you are really good with people. You have amazing people skills. You already run another business of doing these swimming lessons. And so I just gave her all of these reasons to think about why she would be amazing. Then I also shared with her just about some other wins that we have in our business, about other people on our team who are being really successful because we've been able to help coach them to success. And I just left her with that. And I simply said, just think about it. Okay, I know you'd be amazing at this and I'm gonna send you some more information. And it was great and we had great conversations. You guys, I was not salesy, I was not pushy, but I created an opportunity. I could have just let it go and say, she sees my Facebook, I don't need to bring it up. No, I decided to give her samples, to ask her questions, to open up that door and let's see where it goes. Bye, Plexus lady. Um, oh, my AirPods stuck in my hair. Um, okay, you know what? Now that I have seen that video, um, I don't think that that interaction actually happened. I believe that people at the top make things up, make up a potential interaction that could have maybe happened, uh, and they just share it on social media to inspire downlines to do that instead of that, because she doesn't need to do that. She doesn't need to be recruiting people and doing doing this. And, you know, what made me believe that this was probably not a real interaction, like, I don't believe this was authentic in any way, was when this person, obviously, she, I assume she's, you know, somewhat friendly with her. She comes to her house, she teaches her kids, and maybe she was willing to share stuff with her, but it's like, you're just going to be essentially talking to a stranger and just sharing all of your dreams with them. No, people don't just do that. And even if this whole conversation actually happened, you know, none of this was really authentic. You know, you had a plan when she came over to give her products, to bring certain things up. And yes, you may have not pushed her to sign up and buy something immediately, but you still are being salesy. You still are trying to recruit her, which then in turn would make you money. And that whole interaction didn't end up resulting in a sale or a recruit. It just ended in a conversation and a potential maybe who knows. And potential maybe who knows with no sales and no recruit don't make people money. All right, you guys, those were all the videos that I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope you enjoyed them as much as you could. It was very interesting. Uh, we did not debunk anything. We did not learn how to talk in in an authentic way and we did learn something we learned how to not sell a product um talking about you know the name of the product is probably a good start we learned how to uh not not make a joke um by stating that you should join somebody's cult and we learned how to not uh talk about the business and give them all of the gratitude because that is to me kind of dangerous and not how you should go about things. So I guess we did learn stuff today, but we definitely did not learn, uh, somebody did not debunk any of the myths. We have yet to find anyone in any of these videos so far who has debunked any myth. All right, you guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really, really liked it, please subscribe. Let's talk anything and everything anti-MLM in the comments below. And until my next video, I will see you guys then. Bye.